Hello. I'm Penelope Barker, and welcome to my home. I understand that you all are learning about the formation of the United States of America, and you have come to Edenton to learn a little bit more about the 51 women and their actions. I feel that the 51 women played a small part in the independent movement away from England. Thus, they were also part of the creation of the United States of America. But before I tell you their story, I'd like to tell you a little bit of mine. I was born in 1728, right here in Chihuahua County. My parents, my father was a, far, a physician, and my mother came from a relatively affluent family. They both felt that I and my two sisters, Elizabeth and Sarah, should receive some sort of education. Thank goodness for their forward thinking, for it helped me throughout my adulthood, as you will soon learn. My life is fairly normal until the mid-teens, when I lost both my father and one of my sisters, Elizabeth, within one year. Soon, I was taking care of her three children, and at the age of 17, I married John, my widowed brother-in-law, and in two years saw me a widow at 19 with now five children managing a small household. A few years later, I married James Craven, a local planter, political leader here in Chihuahua County. We were together for four years until he too passed. Because we had no children, I became sole heir of our property, assets, and estates, to include those that I had brought with me from my first marriage. With all of this, I became one of the wealthiest women in North Carolina. A few years later, I married Thomas. Thomas Barker had come from Massachusetts several years earlier to read law in Bertie County. He married and he and his wife had a daughter, Betsy. His wife passed and I met Thomas when he was doing law work here in Chihuahua County. We married and he brought his daughter, Betsy, with him to join our family. Thomas and I did have three children but they all passed before the age of one. 1761 saw Thomas on his way to England as a colonial agent. He was so well respected here in Chihuahua County. And although we did not have much representation to King George, he went over in the hope of providing some representation from North Carolina. By the mid to late 1760s, all my children but one had passed. Betsy moved on to Virginia to be with her new husband. As you can imagine, my life was so much different than my friends. For Thomas was in England, Betsy was in Virginia, and I was making day-to-day -day decisions of our property, household, and assets. That is my story. And now I'd love to talk to you about the 51 women. The mid-1760s up to the early 1770s saw an increase in the independent movement away from Britain. Colonists were upset. We were mad. England had just finished the Seven Year War with France and they were broke. They felt the easiest and the quickest way to increase their coffers was to tax the colonists, and tax us they did. 1765 saw the Stamp Act. That is where any printed word would be taxed. And you can imagine what that all entailed. Oh, this act was repealed a year or so later because of the colonists' revolt. But we knew the damage had been done. For King George knew he could now tax us on whatever they wanted. 1773 was the Tea Act. Not a tax, 
but a requirement that the colonists had to purchase their tea from the East Indies Company. Required, I said, not suggested, not recommended, but required. Here we are thousands of miles away from England and they are still telling us what to do and how to do things. And when we found out that some of the parliament members had a financial interest in the East Indies Company, you know exactly how we felt. Meetings were held, protests up and down the colonies. One of the most famous ones, and I'm sure you might have heard about, was the Boston Tea Party. That is where men, a hundred or so, the dead of night, dressed in Native American costume, snuck down to the harbor and proceeded to throw tea from the ships into the water. You know, that certainly got the king's attention. But it wasn't only the men who were upset, it was the women, for it was the women who were purchasing item supplies for their households. And women protested. One, although it may seem very small and of non-importance, a group of women in one of those northern colonies declared that they would not buy or wear ribbon, made or purchased in England. But one of my favorites, Boston was having a ball for a lord, some gentleman from England, not quite sure who he was. And instead of wearing the satin and brocade gowns that they were known to wear, the women showed up in homespun dresses. Nary a jewel could be found that night. Women protested. We too knew the women of Edenton and the surrounding area. What was going on in the world? We knew that the North Carolina provincial government would vote to resend trade with England. And we did know that the Continental Congress would vote and did vote to suspend trade with England. We knew we had to take a stand. We also knew that whatever political action we took, it could be detrimental to us, to our families, our community, and possibly all 13 colonies. So on October 25th, 1774, 10 months after the Boston Tea Party, 51 women, 51 women signed a letter along with a resolution and sent it to King George and Parliament. The resolution basically denounced trade with England and showed our support with our fellow male patriots that we wanted independence from England. The 51 women did not just come from Edenton. They came from Chuan County, Bertie County across the Sound, Perquimans County up the road of peace. Some were single, widows. Some were married, such as I, to attorneys, wives of merchants, tavern owners, planters. We had sisters, mothers, daughters. We even had a mother of an English baronet who signed. We had a daughter of a former North Carolina governor. We had two sisters that their father was a ward of St. Paul's Episcopal Church Parish. Some were more educated than others. We were different, but it did not matter, for we were there for one purpose, and that was to show our support for independence from England. We know that letter was sent, for it appeared in two English newspapers and one newspaper in Virginia. And it was read by many. One of our citizens here in Edenton had a brother in London who wrote back later and said, what is going on? Have the women taken over Edenton? Sadly, the men of England, to include the King and Parliament, did not take our letter resolution seriously. A caricature appeared in 1775 in one of the local newspapers of London. 
making fun of the 51 women. We did not care. We were not after fame. We wanted England to know that we too stood for independence away from England. After the political rally, most of us, our lives went back to normal. Some married, some of us passed. Thomas finally came back from England after 17 years. And as you know, the War of Independence began in 1775 and did not end until 1783. July 4, 1776 saw the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And do you know one of our citizens, Joseph Hughes, signed that document from North Carolina. And then in September of 1787, just last year, the U.S. Constitution was created, establishing the government of the United States. And, and Hugh Williamson, also a citizen from Edenton, signed that document. So to end, I would just like to say, please remember freedom is not free. And to appreciate the patriots in the past, present, and future that have made the United States of America an independent country. God bless. Thank you so much.